Welcome to Let's Good Sports. I'm Brandon. We are almost through the Super Bowl week, Perna. I already broke down the, the game in great detail via the prediction episode, gave you 10 reasons to root for both teams, and pointed out how stupid CBS was for not wanting to air a medical marijuana commercial. And just when I thought CBS couldn't get any dumber, they go ahead and do something like this. Fire a local TV reporter for accurately describing Tom Brady as a known cheater in their lower thirds graphic and totally don't redeem themselves. The one time the news practices journalistic integrity, the producer gets fired? That's the world we're living in? Otherwise, it's too sad and I end up buying him a goat. Ah, oh, damn you, LeBlanc, you're back. You're back, LeBlanc. Oh, CBS, you may have won me over. Today, I also want to give you a taste of Dan Marino. No, that's not a Nutrisystem plug, but a taste that will actually prove why he's the greatest quarterback to ever live and bring you into the mind of Jose Canseco, who believes aliens have tried to teach humans how to time travel. That's good sports. That's good sports. That's good sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Would really make my day. Also, I do have Big Dick Patreon shoutouts for Tim L with a $5 donation and Anthony Dolim... Dolim... Dolimpio also with a $5 donation. Patreon is how I make a GD living. Pays my bills. If you want to support this channel so I can keep making videos, you can do it at patreon.com slash that's good sports. And yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. This is... That's how the economy works. Let's finish this story though about the TV producer who was fired by CBS Pittsburgh. His name is Michael Tellick, and he made a joke about Tom Brady's history of being a known filthy cheater. Yet he was fired because the news station took a journalistic stance saying that they can't be promoting opinions. They have to report the news based on facts and shit, which I applaud and totally agree with until it comes to sports, where a large part of the entire industry is opinion. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, and Colin Coward get paid millions and millions of dollars for having opinions far less accurate than known cheater, or known child kisser, or known self filator And half the time, Stephen A. Smith doesn't even know who is actually playing in an NFL game. Being fired for having an inaccurate opinion in sports media is like getting kicked out of Congress for taking too much pharmaceutical or oil money. Now, a GoFundMe was set up for Telic, and he said he's going to donate all of that money to Tom, Tom Brady's charity? That, no, that's, that's when I realized the Pittsburgh CBS station was actually correct in firing him. I just want to know the mental makeup, though, of the person who believes they are protecting the integrity of the news by firing the person who created a quick joke that actually brought more attention to the TV station than probably anything else in the last 10 or 20 years. God forbid you actually take advantage of people intentionally going to your website or social media accounts. Sports is the one area of local news where you're supposed to have fun. And Pittsburgh fucking hates Tom Brady. It's not like he made this graphic with Ben Roethlisberger. I would also like to point out that it's not really a matter of opinion either. The Patriots were caught cheating in 2007 and stripped of their first round draft pick. And again in 2014 when they lost another first rounder and Brady was suspended for the first four games in 2016. Plus, didn't the 10 year old just prove that Brady cheated? I trust that 10 year old more than whoever the NFL has investigating shit. I bet that kid could properly identify all seven of the secret herbs and spices in uh, KFC chicken, which now is to include naturally farmed Cheetos. Move the hell over Doritos Locos Tacos. You're no longer the only game in town combining one heart disease inducing snack with one diabetes fueling fast food meal and mushing them together. And now I'm waiting for an answer from Panda Express. May I offer the Lay's barbecue Beijing beef and chips bowl? 
Moving on to a quarterback who will forever be known as the greatest QB to ever star in Ace Ventura, Danny Marino. Now I posted this clip I found of him on my Instagram today, at Brandon Perna, and it honestly might be what Marino sent in for his audition tape to land the Ace Ventura gig. I'll have details on how to enter and we'll be announcing a winner later tonight. Did not flub at all. No, it wasn't a flub. It was there was no play. fucking flub. flub it was uh, not a flub. Uh, you, you want to see that play back? No, come on. Let's do it. Fuck it. Hi, I'm Dan Marino from the Miami Dolphins. Welcome to Visa NFL Quarterback Club Week on I hope you've enjoyed your Thanksgiving day. We have more NFL action on this Sunday starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. But tonight, you'll get a chance to be my backup quarterback for a day. You'll get round trip, airfare, and tickets to a game, a complete uniform, and a chance to meet me. Stay tuned. I'll have details on how to enter, and we'll be announcing a winner later tonight. Perfect. Fuck it. Send it in. Nope. I don't want to see shit. The crazy thing about this is the person who won the job of being Marino's backup for a day was Kyle McKee. At which point Don Shula just said, fuck it, let's keep him on the roster as your backup. I don't want to see shit. Now Fox is already working on trying to get Marino another studio job. No, not with the NFL crew, but with Bill O'Reilly. There was no fucking flub. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! No, come on, let's do it. Fuck it. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Fuck it, send it in. Fucking thing sucks! I don't care what those two talk about as long as there are a plentiful amount of fucks in the vernacular. What I do find interesting here is that this is the kind of competence you need to be a quarterback in the NFL. There was no fucking flub. It was not a flub. I shoot all of my videos alone here in my basement, like a second-rate POV porn producer. I wish I had someone to tell me I flubbed a line. I read my scripts off a prompter and sometimes I will say shit completely wrong. Like, that QB threw 76 touchdown passes this season even though I wrote down the number 26. Or Hugh Jackson is a good coach when I wrote down 0-16. Sometimes I can't even say my name right. So for Marino, a guy not in front of the camera every day to do this, Fuck it, send it in. Means he has a level of self-confidence you only read about on Jose Canseco's Twitter feed. Now I discussed this on the That's Good Sports podcast, but I want to read his tweets about aliens and time travel to you because they are such a beautifully poetic combination of fantasy words that George R.R. R. Martin is trying to license them. First, Jose Canseco quote tweets his own tweet of this sick red driver. Then he simply tweets, we are in communication with aliens with a very flexible body composition called AI-51, which makes me wonder if that driver was also made by aliens who historically love golf. That was followed by, these aliens are going to teach us how to try and travel. The brain can physically travel without the body. Uh, maybe that's what the French were trying to teach us with the guillotine in the French Revolution. I'm not sure what kind of sign this is for the state of uh, human society when Jose Canseco is clearly the most enlightened out of all of us. And that was followed by, aliens have been trying to teach us how to time travel, but first we have to change our body composition which we are not willing to do. We have tried with animals and it has failed. Wait, I, my question here is, if we've tried with animals, how does Jose know humans aren't willing to change their body composition? I'm about to go keto. Is that enough body change for time travel, Jose? He continued, time travel puts 42,651 pounds of pressure on a human skeletal structure. Can you detach the brain from the body and equalize the pressure? It could be done. This is the tweet that sold me. There's no way Jose Canseco would just make up a number like 42,651. I've watched Back to the Future well over 36 times. Another not made up number. And never once did I hear Doc mention 42,651 pounds of pressure. 1.21 gigawatts? Yes, but not the other number. But Jose concluded with, our science is totally irrelevant to aliens. Just like an honest joke about Tom Brady is a totally irrelevant reason to fire someone. Aliens. 
Sports. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. You can follow me there if you so desire. And if you haven't watched the Super Bowl prediction episode yet, it's on the screen right now. I also got that cannabis video about the commercial also on the screen if you want to click and watch either of those titillating videos.